from our largest cities to our rural communities. North Dakota citizen guardsmen responded in record numbers, working shoulder to shoulder with fellow North Dakotans to stem the rising floodwaters. They did it with resilience and optimism, showing that with perseverance and a positive outlook, neighbors can help neighbors. The state was divided in half and two military task force were set up. Joint Task Force East was based at the Armed Forces Reserve Center Fargo. Joint Task Force West was activated on March 24th in Bismarck, tasking 50 guardsmen with sandbag operations in response to the rising Missouri River. Flood threats began popping up all over the state. It seemed no city was off limits. The first guard-assisted evacuation happened as Black Hawk helicopters rescued two families from the flooding Antelope River that surrounded the farmsteads in the Carson and New Lipsig areas. Although periods of snow and freezing conditions during the flood flight slowed the rising rivers in most cases, it also compounded the flood fighting efforts. South of Bismarck, over the course of two days, guardsmen assisted with ice demolitions to break up an ice jam on the Missouri River that caused flooding. The group prepared the area for detonation, drilling holes in the ice, and placed C-4 explosives below the water. In Fargo, after only a few days, the number of guardsmen in Joint Task Force East grew to more than 1,300 members who assisted in filling and placing sandbags around the community. They also constructed dikes and set up HESCO barriers in strategic areas. HESCO was invented over 15 years ago and uh, with the intentions for erosion control. And uh, once the military found uh, the success in the product and what it can actually do, it pretty much replaced sandbagging in theaters of war. It's easy to deploy, it's very strong, it's watertight, it does a good job holding back the water. The National Weather Service predicted a crest as high as 43 feet for the Red River in Fargo. It crested at 40.82 feet with a second crest projected that fortunately did not occur. As the water rose, so did the rising commitment of soldiers and airmen throughout the state. The Guard was now fully engaged in flood fighting operations, responding where and when needed. The Guard's aviation assets consisted of scout helicopters, Blackhawks, C-21 Learjets, and a C-12 Huron. Blackhawks and Chinooks from various National Guards in the region joined in the fight. These assets were augmented by the U.S. Army and Coast Guard helicopters and Minot Air Force Base Huey helicopters. These resources patrolled dikes from the air and assisted in moving people and equipment swiftly when needed. Helicopters also airlifted people from flooded homes. Predators from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Office provided real-time surveillance of flood-threatened areas to the Joint Operations Center. Helicopters were also used to spread a sand assault mixture on the Missouri and Cheyenne rivers. One-ton sandbags were placed by helicopters on a dike breach at Oak Grove Lutheran School in Fargo. These sandbag placements were seen across the state in places such as Clawson Springs, south of Valley City, and Cottonwood Creek near Lemoore. Diverting spillway water and slowing erosion, which threatened towns downriver. As the call came to fortify the breach dike at Oak Grove, the Guard launched a Zodiac boat crew to place sandbags in hard-to-reach areas. As you can see, that's a football field. Uh, they have the scoreboard over here. They have their goal posts are still up. Uh, just the post is 10 feet high, and you can't see any of it right now. Evacuations of Fargo began with the assistance of the North Dakota National Guard. Hi. Hi. We are evacuating. Vital to the Guard's flood fighting efforts with a quick reaction force teams who responded to dike leaks and breaches. The teams were strategically positioned near predetermined threats. Welfare visits in many communities were also done by these teams at the request of local law enforcement. in there with a deputy in each unit just to go in there and do a welfare check on these people. The Guard provided high wheel vehicles with operators to support evacuations throughout the state. They allowed the Guard to be ready with personnel and equipment to get the job done. Dike and presence patrols were seen in multiple neighborhoods and communities across the state. In this area so far, we've just had seepage problems. They've been pumping all morning, uh, people ordering up pumps, getting pumps. And uh, I mean, it's really the community uh, here in Timberline that just has absolutely been uh, taking care of business. Guardsmen walked, watched, and listened while they checked on dikes and pumps and assisted where needed. 
Local law enforcement also utilized guardsmen for traffic control points. By mid-April, the guard had ramped up its presence in Lisbon. The ground was saturated and manhole covers exploded from the ever-mounting water pressure. Heavy equipment operators worked swiftly to cover them with clay and dirt to stop the gushing waters. Partially evacuating the city and working hard, putting up contingency dikes This is the Cheyenne River roads. On April 13th, the attention turned to Valley City. The guard responded to a dike breach there. Black Hawk helicopters placed one-ton sandbags to stop the water. The continued flooding in Valley City resulted in a failure of the main sewer system. Following instructions from city officials to conserve water, the 119th Civil Engineer Squadron was called in to set up portable showers and generators. The showers are great. They could be worse, but they're definitely appreciated. On Easter Day, Task Force West engaged in sandbag operations along the Source River in Burlington. And they sandbagged all night south of Minot. The next night, a quick response force responded to the Dakota Square Mall to sandbag there. They also evacuated the local KOA campground. Many guardsmen worked behind the scenes processing, tracking, planning, and executing this massive flood effort. From manning and setting up pumps and heavy equipment operators to command and control, guardsmen played many different roles in fighting the flood. Everyone had a job to do and rolled up their sleeves, resolute to accomplish the task at hand. We uh, just ran in a gentleman that's trying to save his, his house and, and whatever he can back there ran a pump into him so he could start pumping from the outside of his house out. North Dakota National Guard Public Affairs captured video, photographs, wrote news stories, and worked with national media to help tell the story of how the Guard assisted the state in winning the flood fight. Guardsmen cooked and served meals and provided bed-down facilities for those brought in to fight the flood. The North Dakota National Guard's unit ministry team was also mobilized in support of the Guardsmen in the fight. Spirits are sky high. People are, are motivated about the mission. I enjoyed it. You meet a lot of new people, working with the Army hand in hand, it's been a lot of fun. I feel good about helping the community. I guess come out here and help these people, worth it, they like it, they enjoy it. Thank you guys, so it's a great community to have up here. Uh, they feel like this is what they joined the Guard for, to be able to really serve and protect and defend the community like this in a time of need. The teams provided spiritual support, conducted morale and welfare checks, and provided counseling to individuals in need. We had uh, some of our chaplains and also our social workers as well. We've been working with them um, because they're part of our team. Ready? Yep. Ready. National Guardsmen serving were not only from North Dakota, but South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Montana, and Missouri. I mean, this whole operation was literally engineered on the fly uh, in the last 24 hours. We knew we had a storm coming in. We knew we had vulnerable areas in the levees that would be vulnerable to wave action, and we needed a solution. So the engineers sat down, cranked out a solution, and the guard guys made it happen. The solution is to use some polyethylene plastic uh, weighted down by sandbags and connected with, believe it or not, potatoes. Uh, we didn't want to poke any holes in, in the uh, polyethylene, and they wrapped the plastic around it and then wrapped rope or string around that and secure the sandbags to the polyethylene that way. As of June 1st, 2009, the floodwaters began to recede across the state and recovery operations were in full swing. North Dakota Guardsmen stayed on duty, assisting local authorities in monitoring the flooding situation in Jamestown. Four million three hundred thousand sandbags filled statewide as of April 1st, which equates to the height of 1,720 Empire State buildings if the bags are stacked one on top of the other. Ten million one hundred fifty-two thousand gallons of water pumped equates to 107 million six hundred and eleven two hundred cans of soda. 105,395 flight miles equates to more than four times around the world. From city to city, the state called and the North Dakota National Guard responded, living up to their motto, always ready, always there.